Okay, hello again everybody. This is Ed Baig with USA Today. I am reaching you live, hopefully with a halfway decent connection uh, from about 27,000 feet in the sky. I'm on a 737 jet operated by GoGo. GoGo provides uh, in-flight internet, Wi-Fi. Uh, you may be familiar with them. They have a, a, a new flavor of technology they call 2KU. This is supposed to be an improved version that is supposed to permit the kind of thing that I'm trying to do here, which is streaming on an airplane and actually doing a Facebook Live with you all. Now, I don't know how many of you can see me or hear me, and if you can see me or hear me, let me know what the quality is. Um, I see Eli, you're there. Um, so, uh, with any luck, we can uh, have a decent connection and sustain the connection. Uh, I'm gonna give a quick view of the plane, at least before we lose uh, connectivity. And you can say hello to my cohort, Rob Pegoraro. Hey, what's up? Hi there. Uh, whoop, are you there, Rob? Can we be seen? Rob, <laughs> Rob works for USA Today as well as other outlets. Yeah, and, a little uh, bandwidth test? Yeah, let, you want to run a bandwidth test? This Let's is see. Ed Begg of USA Today doing a Facebook Live. Yes, so we're... I'm uh, periscoping your Facebook Live. You're periscoping my... Hello, you know, Periscope. No one knows what we're doing here. Yeah. All right. You want to run... Let's 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 run your speed test. Down. That's not That's bad. That's not bad. I got 32 or 33 got before. All right. So, oh, I got a So Cool from Denise Miller. Okay. There are actually people who are seeing this work. I'm going to walk on the plane now. So I'm going to focus this for a moment away from me. So, give me a tour of the plane. So we can see. Oops. There's the cockpit. There's that full bathroom on the plane. Now we're going to take a tour of the plane. Right, yeah, we're all getting transfers. Yeah, those are the things that will just plug it up immediately. Okay. Um, Let's look out the window. Uh, we got it working. I don't know. Uh, any any of you out there, if you can okay. leave a comment to tell us what the connection is like at your end. We got it working. Excuse me. Taking a little tour of the plane. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, we're going to take a little tour of the plane. This is Ed Baig with USA Today. Showing it. Hello. <laughs> uh, I am on a GoGo test flight. GoGo, of course, provides Wi-Fi on airplanes. You may already be familiar with them. And they have a new version of their tech they call 2KU. This is uh, supposed to be an improved flavor that is permitting just what we're doing, which is Wi-Fi, oh, which is uh, Facebook Live on an airplane. Uh, earlier, I, I, uh, we had a few technical snags uh, with a colleague. I tried a Facebook Live. We were able to connect, but we kept losing the connection. A lot of hiccups. I had been able to watch YouTube video on the plane. That worked pretty well. And uh, do some other things. But now we're actually live on an airplane from about 27,000 feet high. Uh, again, this is GoGo, the company that provides in our planes. We got it going. I'm here with John Wade. John is uh, right. what chief, uh, chief operating officer. All right. So why don't you quickly give a explain to uh, the folks out there how this is working? Sure. Well, we have a satellite antenna on the top of the aircraft, which is connected to the latest state-of-the-art high throughput satellite from Intelsat. So we're demonstrating the new satellite technology from Intelsat together with the new TKU antenna technology and a new modem from Galat all of which comes together to deliver a 100 megabit per second experience onto the GoGo center. Now we had a few yeah. technical snags, as you know, getting this going with a FaceTime. Uh, yeah. So normally we don't allow the passenger world all the streaming off the aircraft, but if you look around the aircraft here, you'll see there's a lot of journalists on board. All those journalists are doing exactly what Ed is doing right now, which is streaming. So we actually created an artificially congested link off the aircraft. But now there's a lot of those guys that don't want their own webcast, so now an idiot is able to actually do his. So how often do you do these? This is a test flight. This is GoGo's own jet. Uh, this is actually only the fifth flight in history. 
string that we love to put together, a new satellite, a new motor. So this is literally groundbreaking stuff. Some of the boats are still being worked Groundbreaking, out. no pun intended. Exactly. <laughs> it's groundbreaking on an airplane that's not too close you want to put together normally. Yeah. Uh, but so we're still shooting the system, so that's why there's a little bit of that. All right, let's talk about, at least among U.S. passengers, uh, you know, assuming all the technical you know, hiccups and, and, are worked out, are we suddenly going to have a bunch of people on passenger jets doing this, I, you know, Facebook Lives or streaming at the same time? I'm sure the airlines may not like that. Correct, yeah. So the system today is really optimized to get video to the airplane, which is why we can have many tens of simultaneous video streams to the aircraft. We live in video going off. I don't think we'll see many airlines really wanting people to be live streaming off the aircraft. So they may well block that as a service, which means that we can actually help them do that. So we'll block that service to make it really about getting Netflix or other video services onto the aircraft. Whether you want to do or Netflix, you're going to do it on the aircraft. So anything uh, we should point out about the plane? It's a 737, as you mentioned. Uh, anything specific about this plane? I mean, it's, uh, it's an airplane. There is nothing specific about this airplane, which is what is so cool, because it means we can put this onto any 737. In fact, we've got something like 1,600 aircraft, and we're going to be installing the TKU systems over the next few years. 1,600, 1600. aircraft. So Delta has got over 100 installed right now. We've got some international airlines about to go live with the service, including Air Canada, British Airways, Air France, KLM. Americans going to be having some aircraft with the uh, 2KU, uh, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Australia. So there's about 16 airlines that are going to be installed in 2KU over the next few days. Great. And again, is this very expensive to do this? It is pretty expensive, yeah. To install a system like this, put the aircraft on the ground, do the installation, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars for the airline to go and make this investment put connectivity on the aircraft. Now again, if you're just joining us, this is Ed Big with USA Today. I'm on an airplane uh, owned by, or do you do? Or We're on an airplane, 27,000 feet over Vermont. Over oh, Vermont, yes. Uh, why can't we go to Hawaii? Is that possible? Uh, that would be great to do that, but we would, <laughs> great to, we would need to refuel a couple of times. Got it. Well, anyway, this is a test plane for, for you guys at GoGo. Uh, GoGo is the largest provider of Wi-Fi on airplanes. That's correct. We are between uh, airline business and our business aviation uh, business, we have about 7,000 aircraft that we provide high speed Wi Fi services to you. And again, just for the people just joining, this is a new flavor of what's called 2KU. 2K, 2KU. 2KU. Yeah, Does correct. that stand for something, by the way? Um, you know, it's really more a technical term than a marketing term. It uses uh, KU technology, which is a spectrum that we use for satellite communications from the satellite to the aircraft. Um, there's nothing particularly novel about that. Okay, and this latest flavor, this higher speed version of it, yes. is, is permitting what we're doing now, which is Correct. Facebook Live. We couldn't have done this with the older technology. Correct. There's about um, 170 aircrafts today in the world, around the world that use our 2 new technology. They're limited today to a lower speed service, maybe around 25 to 30 megabits. This is enabling 100 megabits plus per second to the aircraft. So a very significant upgrade from where 2KU was to where it's gonna, uh, it is today, and then we're going to upgrade all the current uh, installed 2KU aircraft to get to this upgrade service. Now passengers who want to take advantage of this on Delta flight or other flights, presumably they're going to have to pay for the service, as they do now, right? Most, right. most so cases. The prices are coming down, so those, are, those passengers are familiar with the expensive, slow uh, internet connections in the past on board aircraft. That's all going to go away as we see these high-speed systems being deployed. Uh, the price points are coming down, so it's going to be a much more satisfying experience. You're going to pay less and get more. Great. Well, thank you, John. Uh, people are asking, uh, who are just joining us once more, uh, this is Wi-Fi and Airplanes, which is making this possible uh, for doing this Facebook Live. This is GoGo's test uh, flying lab, I guess we'll call it. Um, 737 jet flying somewhere 27,000 feet above Vermont, Vermont. testing right. a new flavor of, of two, I can never say it, 2KU Wi Fi, which taps into satellites, right? That's correct. Uh, we are doing this in conjunction today with a company called Intelsat, who's launching some new generation of what they call Epic satellites, which are very high throughput satellites. So it's very much changing the state of the art in the satellite industry and in the aviation technology industry. Great. Now I can't. We. I have a good. What seems like a decent connection 
at my end, but you all out there watching this uh, will have to tell me for your comments uh, what the connection is like at your end. Is the video smooth? Is the audio good? And so on. But we have been able to sustain this broadcast now for, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So that's pretty good. So I wondered if your viewers would actually like to see a view of the cockpit. Yeah, let's the go take a look. Open, sure. Take a look. Yeah, let's go take a look. Walking to the front of the plane. Not often we get to go into the cockpit of an airplane. Hi there. How are you doing? We're actually running a Facebook Live. Oh, okay. Uh, so you want to uh, tell people, hi there. Hi. What's your name? Nadia. Hi, Nadia. And hi, John. Hi, John. So can you explain to the folks how to fly an airplane? Well, I don't know if we can do that. We're kind of short on time here. But we are currently leaving 25,000, going down to 24,000 feet. And we're on our way back into Newark. And we are, where are we right now? We are about 30 miles south of Burlington, Vermont. Okay, great. And uh, this is uh, GoGo's own plane, right? So you fly for them all the time? Yes. Great, this is very cool. Uh, now, the Wi-Fi that's on the plane that obviously they're testing here, at least for typical passengers on other planes, they sometimes people worry that somehow it's causing interference or what have you. Obviously, that's not the case. It's not the case. But is it something that people do need to worry about? In terms, you know, we're often told turn off your connections on planes and such at times. Uh, no, not really. Uh, we, we don't worry about it at all. And the airplane is designed uh, between surface and 10,000 feet to be uh, disconnected. Terrific. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank All right. You. There you go. We're on GoGo's test flight. Just got a treat to. Go into the cockpit. Again, GoGo is uh, a provider of Wi Fi on airplanes. That's not new, but this is a new flavor of their technology called, called 2KU that's supposed to be faster and, in fact, is permitting what we're doing now, which is a Facebook Live. I was earlier able to stream a, a, a YouTube video. I did have some trouble with connecting on uh, FaceTime, which I was able to do with a colleague briefly, but we lost that connection. And you can see journalists on the plane, and other people who are just uh, doing what they hope to do on planes, text, post, yeah, tweet, like and and stream, and what so happened. Long. There's my cohort, Rob. Say hi to Larry Rob. Maggot. Oh, hey, Larry Maggot. Larry's a pilot, <laughs> fellow journalist and a pilot. Uh, you're, you're doing a FaceTime. How's yeah. that working out? Uh, actually, this is Google Hangouts. Oh, Google Hangouts. It's working out OK? Yeah. Great, because I had some trouble with FaceTime earlier. So anyway, uh, any questions any of you have out there, or again, tell me what the connection is like, because I can't tell from this end, but we've been able to sustain this now for, uh, for about 15 minutes, give or take. Taking video with GoPro. So most of you probably have been on a 737 before, but so it's a regular aircraft. But it's what GoGo uses to test their internet on planes. And this is a version called 2KU, which is faster than before, limiting streaming like we're doing now, Facebook Live, etc. Uh, Roger, you're saying you'd be surprised how good it is. Yeah, we had a few technical hiccups at the beginning, but it does seem to be working pretty well right now. Of course, there's all sorts of issues that will need to be resolved. Even assuming everybody could do a Facebook Live on a plane, I'm not sure if you're going to want to have that happen. It's like you know, being on a bus or train where everybody's on a cell phone. That's annoying. Can you imagine what it would be like on an airplane? Uh, 
looking to see if there are any other questions out there. Very good and clear, Laverna says. Just scrolling down comments now. So you get a good sense of how this works. Uh, not too bad. Uh, as the company explained to me a few minutes ago, this is just the fifth flight in which this has been uh, this has been tested. Yeah, that's a good idea, Eli. We're going to show out the window. Hi there. Say hi. Hi. Caitlin is another journalist on the plane. What do you think? What's your experience been? Um, it's been super fast so far. Not quite the same quality as at my house, but no buffering. Netflix or YouTube or Apple Music. Um, it's been great. Were you able to do a FaceTime? Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar experience. All right, we're going to look out the window. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, just clouds right now. There's not much to see uh, at this moment, but we are proving that we're on an airplane and an airplane in the sky. We're heading back towards Newark Airport, I'm told. If you just joined us, we missed a treat. We actually went into the cockpit. Hey, it's working. Let's look out this side of the plane. There's the wing. Again, uh, we were a few minutes ago near Vermont, over Vermont. I don't know if we're still over Vermont. But we are heading back to Newark Airport on this go-go test flight 737. People are doing what they do on airplanes. Most of you have been on an airplane before, but I gather to say you have not conducted a Facebook Live on an airplane before. Here's the plane that we are on. Eli, if you're out there, I hope you're taking a couple pictures from your end. So we have that. So, uh, Another thing that was interesting is we were able to do this from the ground too before we even took off. You can take advantage of the Wi Fi. That's another thing you can do with this thing you service. Yep. We're all gawking at each other. Okay, I'm going to sit down for a second. face for a moment. There we go. Um, yeah, it is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, you know, I, I took a test flight with GoGo some years ago. First when they did some tech, uh, you know, texting on planes, which was a big deal at the time. Then a couple of years ago at South by Southwest, I took a flight. That was on a, a private jet that they had, a smaller plane. This is a 737. So obviously a larger plane, more passengers, um, and we're able to pull this off. Uh, it's not perfect. I had some technical hiccups at the beginning, uh, especially when I did FaceTime. But right now we're streaming and it's going pretty well. Uh, let's see. Thailand. Hello, Thailand. Quite good sound. Very smooth. Okay, good to know. Yeah, keep the feedback coming because, again, uh, very curious about how the connection is, how seamless it is, what the sound is like, what the video is like. Uh, we are flying um, over Vermont. Actually, by now we may be somewhere else. A few minutes ago we were over Vermont. We took off from Newark Airport. Uh, this is a GoGo. GoGo is a provider of internet on airplanes, and this is one of their tests. Their flying lab, we'll call it. They call it the Airborne Test Lab. And uh, this is a new version of, of their technology called 2KU that is faster uh, and is providing the ability to do what we're doing, which is conduct a Facebook Live from the plane, which is 
pretty cool. And after a few technical hiccups, we've got it going pretty well. Hello from Chicago. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ed Babe. I am a tech columnist with USA Today. Um, and we're trying out Wi-Fi on airplanes. The ability to do uh, streaming and, of course, Facebook Live, which we're doing here. And I'm glad to see that uh, most of you seem to be reporting a pretty decent connection with your own and decent sound. How much does it cost? There's no price yet. This is a test lab. You will have to pay for Wi-Fi on planes. You typically pay what now? About 20 bucks? What's that? How much do you typically pay now for... Average session is about $13. Average session, I'm told, is about $13 right now. And, uh, you know, this is a faster version that's being rolled out on other planes, so we'll see what happens to pricing over time. Uh, I'm trying to read your comments here. Hello from Egypt. Hello from California. So, glad to see folks are joining us up in the sky. I don't know how high we are now. We were roughly 27,000 feet a few minutes ago. We're a little lower now as we fly back towards New York Airport, where we took off from. I was trying to get them to take us to Hawaii, but it didn't quite work. And I am again checking, hello Poughkeepsie, hello St. Louis. All right, some interruptions now I'm seeing from uh, Mana. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Brazil, so people uh, obviously weighing in from all over uh, as we test 2KU technology, that's what it's called, from GoGo. GoGo, a big provider, uh, they're the leading provider of Wi-Fi and planes. There are a lot of Delta flights here in the U.S., as well as some other flights. And this is their test lab. Oh, yeah. Do you want to maybe chat with Oh, sure. Hi there. Let me show you. I'm showing you. Oop, hang on one sec. Switch it. Okay. How do I pronounce it? It's Anna? Anna Chani. And uh, Anand works for GoGo. What do you do for GoGo? I'm a chief technology officer. Ah, great. So you can explain the technology to the folks out there when on Facebook Live. Uh, explain to them uh, as best you can without getting super technical how this is all working. Well, on this plane, what we're demonstrating is a satellite-based in-flight connectivity solution. Uh, we call it 2KU. Uh, it's based on a pretty unique antenna that's unique to GoGo. It's a highly efficient antenna compared to other antennas in the marketplace for in-flight connectivity. And How big is it, by the way? Well, it's a, in, in height, it's about four and a half inches tall. With the radome and the dome that you see on top, it's about six and a half inches tall. Okay. And in diameter, it's a circular antenna, like a disc-shaped antenna. Uh, in diameter, it's about 30 inches. And there are two of them, one for receive and one for transfer. So that's on top of the plane. And in today's flight, compared to the flight that we did 18 months back uh, from the same airport, uh, there are two things that are different. One, we are using a high-throughput satellite that NS had just launched, called IS-32. And we are using our new modem. Uh, and so using a, it's the same antenna, but it leverages the next generation of satellite and the next generation of modem delivering speeds of 100 megabit per second to the plane and then any particular individual is seeing speeds anywhere between you know 20 to 100 megabit per second depending on what everybody else is doing right so obviously that's permitting what we're doing now which is having a facebook live which would not have been possible absolutely prior so it, to it allows you to do pretty much anything that you want to do including browsing email streaming uh, it allows every passenger to be able to do whatever they want to do. So it's essentially bringing just abundance of bandwidth so people are able to do whatever they want and have a good experience. Now, what about when, you know, it's a packed plane, lots of passengers, if everybody is streaming at the same time and hitting the internet at the same time, I know I've got a conferences where it's an issue where everybody's trying to hit the network at the same time. Is that an issue on airplanes with this technology? No, so we have designed this such that we could allocate, you know, as much bandwidth needed to the plane to be able to support that. And 
know, in a plane full of hundred, couple of hundred people, even if you allow, and we, we do allow all kinds of applications, there is going to be certain percentage that's going to stream, certain percentage are going to browse, and so on. So we expect a plane full of people, everybody connected, to be able to do whatever they want to do with this technology. Got it. Now, um, again, yeah, I was talking to some of your colleagues earlier. I can't imagine that commercial airlines going to suddenly want every passenger to be doing a Facebook Live like we're doing now. Not necessarily from the technical point of view, but just you know, bothering passengers sitting next to you. Absolutely. So, in fact, commercial airlines require us to block voice, any two-way communication, uh, uh, like voice-based communication. So, voice over IP, Facebook Live, uh, Skype is all blocked on commercial planes. And so, on this plane, you're able to do that. Sure. We don't allow this on a commercial plane. Understood. This is really to show off yeah. what's possible, you know, That's correct. from the technology point of view. That's correct. Uh, I had a few hiccups, <coughs> excuse me, initially trying to do a FaceTime with a colleague and we kept losing the connection. I gather the upload is not, you know, as fast. I, I, I don't know what happened on your particular experience. Uh, there were a lot of other people FaceTiming as well. Typically in a uh, in-flight connectivity system, uh, the internet is asymmetric. There is a lot more you consume from the internet than you send towards the internet. So we provision this aircraft with that kind of asymmetry but there's a lot more bandwidth coming to the plane than bandwidth off the plane. When the 15, 20 people here, everybody started FaceTiming and, and doing that two-way communication, probably you experience some congestion. Now, how much more... I mean, this, I, I'm told this is the fifth time that, that this is, there's been a flight like this. Um, how much testing goes into something like this before you can even introduce well, the, the, it to the, your The fifth your time partners? is more a demonstration much of the testing we do it in the lab, uh, there are various stages of testing. We do testing in the lab, we do testing on this flight test, and we can do testing on our terrestrial system with uh, what's called a motion platform where we can you know, rotate the antenna, turn it around, and, and so we don't need to necessarily do flights on this particular plane to be able to do testing. We have a question from one of our viewers. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, Mana. Ask how soon will this be available for public use and how much will it cost? Well, the 2KU is available to public use right now. But not there this are, flavor of 2KU, right? right? There are 170 planes with 2KU. With a new modem and high throughput satellite, I would say by this time next year, almost every plane that we will be installing and bringing to market will be 2KU with this flavor of modem and satellite. And it will be up to the airline themselves to show, or how does it work in terms of pricing? Well, it's a complex business model. There are a variety of business models. We have business model where airlines, you know, create products, they price it. Some of them give it away, some of them give it away to premium passengers. So it's going to be complex from that standpoint. But what I can say is, compared to the pricing that we had before, it will be cheaper pricing and better value because you're getting better bandwidth and better experience. And I gather we could also, it starts, because we were able to do it, it starts right from the ground. So it's not like That's you correct. have to be at a certain altitude. That's correct. Because it's satellite based, you have a get to get service, it's available, and you would also have the ability to do live TV. You call it IPTV, so you will have a handful of channels of live television. Again, it's up to the airline whether they offer the product or not, but the capability will exist. Uh, are they likely to say, don't turn it on until you get to a certain altitude, or, or, or not necessarily? I mean, Right now, Delta Airlines, uh, for example, has it uh, working from gate to gate. Gate to gate, okay. Yes. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. So again, for those of you just joining us, hello, Puerto Rico. Uh, for those of you just joining us, um, this is Ed Baig with USA Today. I am on a flight uh, heading now back towards Newark Airport where we took off from. This is a test flight uh, from a company known as GoGo. They provide internet service in, uh, in the air. Uh, and they have a new flavor of their technology. It's the latest flavor of what's called uh, 2KU. It's faster uh, and it's permitting the kind of thing we're doing right now, which is a Facebook Live from somewhere up in the air. We were as high as, uh, I believe, 27,000 feet. We're no doubt lower right now because we're going back to the airport where we started Newark. Uh, but you can look out over the way and see that there's a little above the clouds. And uh, under the 
sign off shortly. Um, but uh, I'm glad that most of you seem to have reported a decent experience in terms of uh, in terms of the quality of the video and sound. Yes, Sebastian, leg room. Can you imagine? I love it. I, I typically do not have this kind of leg room when I'm flying, and no, I don't fly first class at last. Um, but this is kind of a first class experience on this airplane, 737. Go, go, test flight, called the Airborne Test Lab. Thank you all for joining us. Um, hopefully, again, it's been a good experience. I want to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter, at Ed Big. That's at E-D-E-A-I-G, at E-D-E-A-I-G. Send an email to ebaig at usatoday.com, E-D-A-I-G at usatoday.com. Let me know what the experience was at your end. I really want to hear from you. Uh, and what do you think of the idea of Wi-Fi on planes generally? Some people like to completely escape the idea that you're always connected. You know, they look to that two-hour flight or longer flight, whatever it is, as a way to escape emails from your employer or whatever. But uh, let me know. <laughs> Excuse me. I think we're going to land shortly, so I'm going to go back into my seat. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Ed Big from USA Today. And we'll see you soon.